Well, you had to figure with the past several weeks, the raw ratings continuing to decline and plateauing at a very, very bad level, like mid-90s level type of bad, that Vince was going to kick it into panic mode at some point in time, and that you knew he was going to go down the part-timer route and try to flood his show with him and hope that he could get a cheap pop in the ratings. Because now it's all about one week to the next with this guy who was trying to slowly kill what he created. And that's what you got in this week's show was an infusion of big-time names from the past all over the damn place. And at the end of the day, of course, it didn't mean two hella beans. Of course, it was done poorly. Of course, these guys were poorly utilized. And as a result, the Raw ratings still sucked. And it was well-deserved. Like, for example, you kick off the show right away. Here comes Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, shit, Christ, he's going to be there to do the podcast with Brock Lesnar. Why the fuck not bring him out? Why not kick off the show right away with them? Create some type of element of it. You don't know what the fuck's going to happen throughout the course of the next three hours. So, of course, Austin's there to plug WrestleMania 32, a show that is still several months away. I understand you're in Dallas, Texas. Maybe you're trying to plant the seed that Austin is going to be there. Perhaps he's even going to be wrestling. I get that. But it's like this company cared more about WrestleMania 32 than they did the show that they're trying to sell for Sunday, Hell in a Cell. I get that WrestleMania 32 is going to be a big, huge deal. It's going to be a primary focus, as it should be. But you should probably be worried a little bit about the path to get there, because no matter what you're going to throw at WrestleMania 32, if you drive everybody away the next four months or so, it's not going to fucking matter when shit gets to get. It's not. So you bring out Austin to basically pump up his podcast, talk about WrestleMania 32, and introduce The Undertaker, and then exit stage left. Well, whoop the fucking do Hey, at least... The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar are there. You know, they're only the main event for Hell in a Cell. They might as well fucking show up. But, of course, the segment is largely the same type of shit we've seen several other times between these two guys involving Heyman and Lesnar and Taker. Everybody else is pretty much saying the same fucking shit. So nothing was really accomplished. Big fucking surprise. Then you come back in segment two. You've got John Cena, the Dudley Boys, the New Day. Instead of divesting your resources and splitting them up throughout the show and taking some of your popular acts like the New Day, one of your more popular acts you have right now, the Dudley Boys, who can be a very popular act for you still, and John Cena, who gets attention at least, I guess. Instead of splitting them up throughout the show and doing several interesting things with them, we just throw everybody to fucking gather and make one lame-ass six-man tag match out of it. Of which the New Day wins, and it just stop. So you bring back Austin to introduce Taker, who you brought back to wrestle Lesnar again, which defeats the whole purpose of the streak ending if Taker ends up just going over on fucking Lesnar. Taker wasn't supposed to drop the streak to Lesnar, so that way Lesnar could sit there and put back over The Undertaker. If you were going to do that, then why waste your time at WrestleMania 30 doing what the fuck you did? Because again, it's so often the case, anything involving Vince and his creativity... At this point in time, involves absolutely no continuity, absolutely no vision. It's all angry old man, knee-jerk, reflex, reactionary bullshit that doesn't fucking work. And the only people that seem to think that this is any fucking good in any way are the sheep that are so programmed to believe that anything the WWE is good, or any of the sheep that work within the WWE that are so, so worried about their damn job security that the only thing they're concerned about is sucking Vince's sphincter until it dries up in order to keep their fucking job. I mean, it just gets worse. HBK's there. HP shizzles in the hizzle for shizzle. Yippee! So that way we could do a lame-ass backstage segment with him, Triple H, and Stephanie. And also do an in-ring segment the last a couple of minutes with Seth Rollins where basically HBK's there to tease a little bit and then introduce fucking Ryback. Ah! Again, what good does it do to bring in HBK if this is how you're going to fucking utilize him in the same exact manner in which you utilized Austin? It's like one of these lazy-ass paint-by-numbers, lather-rinse-repeat type of situations where you're booking everybody the same, you're featuring everybody the same, and it makes no fucking sense. It doesn't help anybody. And speaking of that, you have two bigger names that you invested years into on screen in Triple H and Stephanie, and somehow this fucking company, in particular Vince McMahon, can't figure out a better way to utilize them than in a couple of crappy-ass backstage skits. He's the game! He's fucking Triple H! He's been kissing your ass for a decade and a half! You've been pounding him down our throat since the mid-90s! You would think you would want to get some return on that investment outside of backstage skits. 
And one of them is your fucking daughter with the fake tits. You'd think you'd have a better role for her, too. Holy Christ. Oh, Ric Flair shows up. Not drunky, drunky Ric Flair, unfortunately, because that would have been too goddamn awesome in its own right. We have Ric Flair there, so that way he could put over Roman Reigns, because that's the last thing we fucking need. The guy that can't interest anybody at this point in time. Let's continue to tee it up and make it so fucking obvious that this is the direction we want to go for WrestleMania 32. Instead of maybe going down the Ryback path, the guy who's been there longer, who's paid more dues, frankly, would have more people behind him, gets a better reaction more consistently, the right type of reaction more consistently, is a more interesting and compelling character at this point in time, even with what the WWE tries to do to fucking ruin him. Instead of going down the Ryback path and building him up to win the 2016 Royal Rumble, having him win WrestleMania 32 and actually launching off something interesting with that world title post-WrestleMania 32, we're building up Roman Reigns. Oh, fucking Christ. And somebody decided we're going to give Reigns a microphone again. So that way he could talk to Bray Wyatt and tell Bray Wyatt what he's feeling. It's all about feelings and emotions and a whole bunch of lame shit. And Eric Rowan's appearing out of fucking nowhere. Where the hell did this come from? I guess it doesn't matter when you're Vince because he just assumes that we're stupid and we don't know and we don't care. Well, it's just kind of obvious. All of a sudden, here's fucking Eric Rowan. Where the fuck is Luke, Har Luke Harper? Eh, you know, whatever. you got pointless Divas matches. And the whole build-up to the night is a reuniting of the Shield to take on the Wyatt fucking family. It's cool if this is early 2014. It's late 2015, though, and we're back on the same shit again. The Shield versus the fucking Wyatt family. Who the fuck thinks this is a good idea? Last time I checked, Kane is wrestling Rollins for the title on Sunday. I don't remember seeing Kane at all the entire night. Where the fuck was he at? And this whole shit with the Shield and the Wyatt family. Enough is enough. Stop going back to the well with this crap. We're tired of seeing it. A bunch of guys that you have no fucking direction for. You have no fucking purpose for. You have no fucking plan for. Which is, of course, emblematic of this entire product and this entire show. Vince is such a dumbass at this point that he brought back the big name part-timers. Think of the names he brought back on this show. He brought back Stone Cold Steve Austin... The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels. He's got the Dudley Boys in the fold, and this show fucking sucked, and the ratings sucked again. How the fuck is that even possible? How could you take these legends, these icons, these big, huge stars, and make them, frankly, inconsequential and seem like they're a waste of time? You get the all... Instant pop of, oh, it's nice to see him. And frankly, as wrestling fans, every time you see him, they're like, hey, at least we know he's not fucking dead. That's the pop that you get. And then that's it. There is not one interesting or compelling thing heading into Hell in a Cell. Frankly, at this point in time, there's not one interesting or compelling thing heading into the Royal Rumble season coming up soon. There's certainly nothing interesting or compelling heading into WrestleMania 32. It can't possibly be that hard to write a somewhat decent wrestling show. It just can't be. And yet somehow, this out-of-touch, senile old coot continues to outdo himself. The way this asshole is booking Raw every week, it's not a question of if he's going to kill it. It's a question of if he's going to kill it before he actually kicks the bucket himself. What a fucking joke and a half. 